Hi, this is Forrest, the Keeper of the Canon. Just as a heads up, we're moving our studio around this week, so there's a lot of pops like that one right there throughout this episode, so sorry about that. Um, you can go to our show notes if you just want to see the cool found footage stuff and spare your ears, but enjoy the episode. So here I am with Disney World, one kid's opinion. For example, whenever I'm at a loss for words, I'll just insert the phrase, cultural touchstone of our generation. What results can you expect from anal breathing? What's a strong man? Uh, a strong man. Hey, Lord. Oh, yes, get your name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of CGPP, the WATP podcast, where we talk about things that are going to be happening on Chris Gethard Presents. And we use a lot of acronyms, so I hope you can keep up. Yeah, this is going to be a fully acronymed show. We're going to be talking about the FFF. Yeah, and TBH, I'm really excited for the FFF. I really love them. I'm excited for them to be on CGP and to talk about them on CGPP. And I hope they get to talk to CG on CGP about them. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. (laughs) This is episode uh, 11 of CGP that we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be talking about the Found Footage Festival. These two dudes who are bringing you all of the best of VHS. Yes, and I'm and public access in terms of the CGP one. Yeah, it's really exciting. This has been exceptionally fun to research. Yeah, like they have a seven dollar seven ninety nine a month membership where you can just get access to their archive of over five thousand VHS tapes, and I'm like honestly probably going to do it because it's yeah. so exciting to get to see all this stuff like i love this sort of old retro like pre youtube before the youtube before there was youtube vhs era of things also i'm forest keeper of the canon and i'm emily pineapple <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna say i was having not the best week and just putting these people on and letting the youtube run was so wonderful yeah they were definitely a great pick me up this week Definitely, definitely. So yeah, let's get into their bio. Um, Well, first off, this episode's going to air on September 4th. Yes, September 4th, 2019. September 4th, 2019. And we're going to go into their bio, which we have clobbered together from their website, Wikipedia, and an SFGate article from 2005. And yeah, that really communicates how long they've been doing this because their current thing, the found footage festival was already up and running in 2005 and getting press mentions oh yeah sf chronicle press yes the best press the best press sf wow (laughs) okay (laughs) i mean for something from new york to be getting mentioned in our newspaper does sort of i think illustrate how much attention they were already getting that's true Um, But yeah, the Found Footage Festival is a -a one-of-a-kind event that showcases footage from videos that were found at garage sales and thrift stores and in warehouses and dumpsters across the country. They grew up, uh, they being Joe Pickett and Nick Brewer, uh, they grew up in Wisconsin and attended state school there. For a time, both Brewer and Pickett were contributors to the satirical newspaper The Onion. And in New York, Pruer spent four years as a researcher for The Late Show with David Letterman, and one of his main responsibilities was to look for old, embarrassing commercials and appearances for celebrities who were scheduled as guests. The partners have first-hand appreciation for the compromises of their featured performers. Pruer worked at a McDonald's in high school where he first learned of the sublime nature of corporate training films. One found footage festival staple is a Mickey D's instructional video called Inside the Outside custodial duties that's not it at all it's inside and outside custodial duties yeah yeah it's not just inside the custodial duties that happen outside of a mickey d's which could include (laughs) just cleaning your own house Uh (laughs) it's just the like custodial duties mcdonald's employees do in their free time (laughs) vacuuming your car Pickett, who worked uh, for a time at a video duplication service, once took a job at a video rental store in a mall just because he'd heard its training videos were jaw-droppingly funny. He stuffed a copy into his backpack and quit the next day. 
quote, luckily, comma, we have no scruples at all, end quote, Brewer says. In 2004, Pickett and Brewer quit their day jobs to focus on production of their first feature documentary, Dirty Country. They started touring the Found Footage Festival show to fund the production of the documentary. In addition to its regular touring schedule, the festival has appeared at the HBO U.S. Comedy Arts Festival. Just for laughs, in the New York Comedy Festival, the Impact, spelled I-M-P-A-K-T, special. That I mean, that sounds like a San Francisco thing. Yeah, that does, except we'd remove the vowels, too. <laughs> Festival in the Netherlands, and the Comedy Standard Film Festival in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's the Central Standard Film Festival. <laughs> and they're currently based out of New York City. And the Found Footage Festival appeared on True TV as part of Rachel Dratch's Late Night Snack. And uh, Nick actually was, a, yeah, as we said, a researcher on The Late Show with David Letterman for five years and Found Footage Festival has the entire VHS archive. And I love how that parallels with Gethard's crew taking the bridges from the Letterman set out of the dumpster when the show ended. Um, because, you know, both of these great comedic icons that are coming together for this episode of CGP have scavenged the leftovers of De David Letterman. <laughs> Nick was also an intern on Mystery Science Theater 3000 from 1998 to 1999. I mean, that makes so much sense. Right. And I love it because I get very strong MST3K vibes from a lot of their live stuff for mm -hmm. reasons we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the first things that they did together was they worked on Mark Lives in Ikea, which was a very early viral video where Mark Malkoff moved into a New Jersey Ikea for a week while his apartment was fumigated. And there's 25 episodes. And Joe and Nick worked on a lot of them. They wrote and directed a good chunk. Like five. Like five of them. They shot... Well, Nick also shot one and directed one that was not one of the ones they did together. And then Joe also edited one that they didn't do together. And this is really funny. I had I had honestly kind of forgotten about this series. But then as soon as I saw it, all these things flashed back <laughs> into my head. Like you would definitely cut to me, younger me watching it with like looking at it, gazing at it lovingly. Like, oh, wow, the internet is great. And then popping back to now and being like... The internet can be great. And these guys like were so honestly formative for my sense of humor because I remember loving these things when it first came out. And What year was that? 2008 was when these were released. So oh, wow. real early in yeah. YouTube. And um, they also, the same comedian did a thing where he went to 171 Starbuckses in <laughs> one day, which was every single Starbucks in New York City and ordered coffee. And so that the, they were, it was, this was all very, very early internet video stuff. Yeah, it's pretty great. A lot of what they do, it's something in between curatorial uh, work and, I mean, what, what would you call it? Kind of a cultural mashup. Because a lot of what they do is not only just showing, you know, the funny parts of these funny videos. And the rules are that it has to be on VHS. It can't be on purpose funny. Right. Yeah. It can't be a comedy video. It has to be, you know, a training video where people are just acting ridiculous yeah. or massaging their cats. <laughs> <laughs> it's how you get the cat to smile. Yeah. The cat giggles as well. Oh, yeah. The I cat didn't giggles. know that cats could giggle, but apparently they can. Thanks, Nick and Joe. I would, I would call them. I mean, I think curators really does do a good job of summing it up just because like how Adam when you go to a museum you are getting a shaped yeah view of it with context changed and molded by the curator and I, I think that that what they do when they edit their montages is, is sort of it's that it's assembling the room in an art museum where you see all the art put next to each other to add new context to it and all that kind of thing so. I really like that I that's a really cool way of thinking about it that I hadn't before. Because the way that they put their clips together, you'll see on, on YouTube, you can just find a lot of their montages. And that is a big part of the live shows. And yeah. I'm sure will be a big part of um, this, this one we're going to see, which I'm hella excited for. But yeah, they're putting videos together to change the contexts of those videos and in a way, like, make them better, like, like, highlight the feeling of each of the videos by 
putting them next to other videos with similar and different feelings so you get a better idea of like, wow, like this is what this VH tape is without having to watch the whole fucking thing. Yeah. And and, and especially with some of the stuff we'll talk about later, like the 101 Jesuses, mm-hmm. you get a, um, you sort of get a zoomed out view of some of the common themes and through lines that you can find through all these things. Like mm-hmm. all the ones that when they, especially when it's a topic like that, that reoccurs in such a similar Jesus, form. The topic that reoccurs. Well, because it's like, it's the same story. <laughs> yeah. So it's like remake and remake and remake and remake. So there it's an extra thing of getting the zoomed out view. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's really, I love their stuff. I love their stuff so much. It It's so good. As I was putting together our intro montage, I was like, oh my God, I'm doing what they do, except <laughs> with audio from people who have already done this. <laughs> Just try to give you all a flavor. And that's what they do, but better. So continuing in the the trend of us highlighting people who are doing what we're doing, but better that's than true. us and that's for true. longer than us. This is two episodes in a row of, oh, yeah, they did this before we thought of it and did a better, better job of it. Yep. Yep. We are. We stand on the shoulders of more talented giants. I mean, we sa- we stand we stand on their shoes. We stand in the footprints of much more talented giants. <laughs> but yeah, the second thing we wanted to highlight was a VCR Party Live episode. They have tons of VCR Party Live episodes on YouTube where uh, there's actually one in the Discord right now uh, with Chris Gethard because they yeah, have Chris Gethard yeah. on one of them. And this is a time when they sit in their studio with somebody they show them videos often those people will bring in videos to watch and they will talk about them they'll talk with the person you know about their history interviewing them etc but also about the videos where they found them similar videos sometimes a history of those videos sometimes they have looked up the person in those videos and know them like the the kid from my intro montage. Oh, yeah. One kid's opinion on Disney World. They know that kid. They know the kid. That's so cool. I love that they found him and know him. I really hope he's on this episode of CGP because they know the kid. That episode, that, that one kid's opinion was on public access. I would not be surprised if they get him. I mean, it's just such a natural setup. And I think if they know him and have already talked to him, they know he's good. And that he's someone they could talk to on. Yeah. And the that it. they can make fun of because that's what right. they said to Geth because he was like, I feel bad making fun of this child. And they're like, no, we know this child. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> and that yeah. show, um, VCR Party Live, is every is live every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And so you should definitely check it out. I mean, I'm going to now that we ha- there hasn't been a Tuesday since we've seen it. But now that I've seen it, I want to become a loyal VCR party live viewer because it's just so good. It's so it is fun. It's really fun. And it's... like they add context through their conversations. And sometimes the, the guest has their own videos that they've brought. Yeah. Or want to highlight. And so that's also a nice touch to see yeah. them talking about that. And sometimes to see them see stuff that they are not, that they haven't seen before. Mm hmm. Yeah. So one that we watched was uh, Talking Gary Busey with Sam Sater. Yes. And um, they have. They open it with a tedium quarter and a excitement quarter. So it's Joe's tedium corner where he finds the most tedious freaking video. And in this one, it was like a fashion show that from the 70s that was trying to ape Star Wars. Very clearly oh, the aesthetic. There yeah. was a guy in a robot costume just like taking these white robes off of models to like show off the outfit underneath. And the outfits underneath were all very Leia-like white dresses. Yeah, and it, they were playing like off-brand John Williams, like classical music and even edited. Yeah. Even edited down. This clip is crazy boring. It takes this person like almost a minute to just untie the stupid ties <laughs> yeah. around these women <laughs> yeah no it, it, it takes a long time it it, it it succeeds in being in being a tedious little clip yep uh and then nick's excitement corner was a video of vhs of high speed accidents from the video crash impact which just sounds like a YouTube compilation of like people falling or like a snuff video thing. Yeah, that was funny because you noted that 
the the the, the brutality yes. of it is nothing compared to some of the fail montages. Yeah, like it's very. At least the parts the ones that we, we saw. saw, the parts they showed at least were very clean accidents. Yeah, like, like the a person car spinning out or something, but not anyone visibly hurt. Yeah, or like a, a motorcycle on a course hitting a thing and the person kind of dashing off yeah. of it, but clearly fine. But yeah. I, I did like the excited narrator yeah. in the clips from it. That really added something that I think all these fail videos would do well to imitate. And random typography. You yes. should have a, a different font for every crash. I think that that's what really makes a video cohesive. <laughs> um, <laughs> they also highlighted some dirty dancing ripoffs from their collection. <laughs> including uh, the video Swayze dancing, which was Patrick Swayze with his mom, Pat Swayze, teaching the moves from Dirty Dancing. Patrick Swayze does not want to be there. Pat Swayze is very happy to be there. Patrick's and, only there for like a half a clip. Yeah, he's barely there. But <laughs> luckily, they have a clip from it but they, they that they have on their YouTube channel. So you can actually see Swayze dancing yourself. <laughs> and there's also others like Dance and Dirty, which teaches some of the moves from the movie. <laughs> Dirty line dancing, which teaches the <laughs> filthiest line dancing that you can imagine. And then Learn the Art of Dancing Dirty has the Afro Tilt, which is mostly, a, it's just awkward pelvic thrusts. Yep. Though the narrator does encourage you to improvise. Yes, it, it does look like PG-13 twerking. And we realized that this is absolutely the dance move that Garland was doing to Dr. Stone on the dance floor in The Last Victim by Karen yep. Robards. Where like they're dan they're dream dancing at this weird place and he's just like jacking her off with his thigh yeah. in between her legs. Yeah, it's that dance. And it's it, literally that. Yeah, there's it's it, we're gonna yeah, it's that dance. And as soon as we saw it, we were like, oh, Garland. Garland. It's Garland. It's Garland. He he was he This did, is how he learned it. He did, this is how uh, he learned this dance from a VHS. He couldn't if, have killed those women. He was too busy learning how to dirty <laughs> dance from VHS play. Tapes. I love the idea that he's a dancer in VHS training videos. <laughs> and he That's was his framed. Alibi. Yeah, his alibi was I was in this video they were filming. I was but doing he was the too Afro embarrassed tilt. To show them because he's a badass. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, but it was uh, it was really cool. There was also a follow up song to Papa Don't Preach. Yes, this was amazing. And was that one that Sam Sater brought? Yeah, that was the one that Sam Sater had seen. Um, I don't remember how Sam Sater saw it, but he uh, he he had it was like he had gotten it from Jimmy Aiello, the guy who stars in it. Yeah, so, through some chain of events. And Jimmy Aiello is in the Papa Don't Preach video as Madonna's father. And so he did this sequel video <laughs> from the perspective of Madonna's father about 10 years after Papa Don't Preach, where he's just trying to find his daughter who was run off at the end of the previous video. Yep. And just, just daddy cares about you. He was just trying to help. He was just trying to help. Papa's uh, just looking out for you. <laughs> And they hired a Madonna lookalike. So there's like a scene where he thinks he sees her and he starts running and then person takes off glasses. It's like, oh, it's not Madonna. It's just someone who looks like Madonna. It's just some random chick. Um, and it ends with like a woman putting her hand on his shoulder to be like, oh, is this Madonna? Madonna? Is this? Is it's, it? his it's his grandchild. Uh -huh. uh, they show quickly. A Christian film where Gary Busey becomes a dog. He's a ruthless businessman who dies, but then he's turned into a dog so that he can earn his way to back into heaven. But only his friend sees him as a man. Everyone else sees him as a cute little puppy. But to his friend, it's Gary Busey walking around on all fours. In a leash. They have him leash. in a leash. Yeah. With like a bone in his mouth. Like, yeah. like kinky bullshit like that. Yeah. Uh <laughs> And then there's also some clips from the 70s Dinah Shore show where she, she would always ask celebrities to sing. And so you get a lot of celebrities doing karaoke that they really shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, the Papa Don't Preach videos. We got uh, Nice Things, uh, which was uh, things that Nick took photos of at liquor stores and wishes that he bought. So they, they really go through yeah. a lot of different just weird bullshit. Like I love these the, guys are curators of weird old bullshit. Yeah. I don't know why 
it brings me so much joy to just watch these weird fucking montages. Like, I just want to see weird things flashed in front of me ad infinitum, which I think is just the Gethard show. Like, well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, I think <laughs> I think it, it does explain why Gethard and them feel that kinship because like, mm-hmm. Gethard worked for Weird New Jersey. Yeah. Like he was also a, he is a former curator of weird stuff. And still is, honestly, with a lot of the TCGS episodes, like it leaned, like it was intentionally odd sometimes. And yeah. so it makes sense that they would all get along and why I would love them both and feel so seen by this desire to like curate all the weird yeah. nonsense that you can find in VHS tapes. And just putting them next to each other in ways that makes them funny and highlights how great they are. There's a great one where it's just like this intro of a film called like How to Talk to the Elk. And it's like a snowy scape. And you're like, what the fuck? How to talk to yeah, the elk? Yeah. And then it goes to another clip. I don't think it's from that video. But a guy just blowing through a tube making the worst noise ever. That was actually one of the just, videos they got from the Letterman collection. Yeah. That they made from the... Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. They yeah, made the that. The montage they, is from... The sources... Yeah. The source clips were from the Letterman VHS collection. Just, like something like that. And that doesn't even totally no. do service to how awful the noise it made is. <laughs> uh, the third thing that we wanted to highlight was VCR Games. This is a particular montage that they put together and that exists on YouTube. Yeah. There used to be games. I So I'm not a big board game person. And I did not know that there were VHS games where you put in a VHS tape and something talks to you right. and then you're involved in that game. Yeah, generally. So I had a Star Wars VHS board game. I never played it, but I had it. <laughs> and um, you would put in a tape and then that would give you a time limit. It generally seems like it was about 60 minutes and you would have to do things on the board in time. And the game, the TV would periodically yell at you, it would, like make fun of your name. Um, without the hearing the Klingon you. challenge one, yeah, uh, was particularly great. There's just like this rando Klingon on the the like Enterprise uh, bridge. Yeah, it was the Enterprise bridge from Next Generation. And so, to give you a sense of how these games worked, I'm going to read from this PC World article about <laughs> VCR board games, which said, and this is specifically about the Klingon one. It said, by the early 1990s, it was only natural to adapt one of TV's most famous sci-fi series to a VCR board game. In A Klingon Challenge, players navigated through the Starship Enterprise as they tried to defeat a Klingon terrorist bent on hijacking the ship to start a Klingon Federation war. The game included 60 minutes of live-action video shot on the set of Star Trek The Next Generation and starred Robert O'Reilly, who played Klingon Chancellor Gowron, on Star (laughs) Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. That fact alone should have made this a must-have for diehard Star Trek fans, but it wasn't enough to make the game a huge success. So what I haven't been clear on, despite all my research, is... So obviously, if you lose, it plays the ending. Mm-hmm. What's the ending if you win? Does oh, it just yeah, because you can't choose. Because there's no chapters, because it's VHS. Is it just like fast-forward to a certain time? Because if that's the case, then it'll just play that you lose, and then just play that you win. I mean, it could just be that, like, at the end, he's like, I don't know what's going to happen. You will have to decide for yourselves. Rawr, I am a Klingon. Oh, so, I mean, I guess, the, so, based on Nightmare, the video board game, which was also <laughs> in their montage, it was basically you were competing against each other, I think. But also. And the, oh, no, you, had, you, said, you had to beat it. So, my guess is it does just, like, stop. Because <laughs> you won, and so you know you won. But it's like a little, it would feel really underwhelming to do this like whole board game, especially if you win. Imagine if you win at like 59 minutes and 59 seconds, you like win right at the end and it's just like, well, too bad. All we got to do is cut him off in the middle of a sentence. (laughs) Um, If you want to see the whole ones, though, you can subscribe to their subscription service or it's not like a subscription. It's like a clubhouse, essentially. Yeah, it's like a viewer. It's like the long play viewers club. Yeah. And so for like a monthly fee or like a yearly fee, you can just watch the entire yeah, the VHS. super long play club. And I don't know if I don't know that those ones are on there, but a lot of their back their stuff is mm-hmm. um, including all their live shows. Yeah. Which I would definitely suggest checking out. Oh, yeah. Those are extremely fun. We watched two of them uh, and they're excellent. I think that they're probably somewhat similar to what's going to happen on 
Are there, are there going to be calls? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm so excited. But also, one of the big takeaways from this VCR board game video before I move on is they got Dana Carvey to do a Wayne's World VCR board game. <laughs> and this would be like peak Dana Carvey. <laughs> and they got him to play Garth in a Wayne's World VCR board game. VCRs exploded. It was a lot like YouTube. They talked about in um, an interview that there was a time when the technology just got really cheap. Yeah. And so that's why there were so many exercise videos. They usually do an exercise montage video in every show. There were so many like celebrity bullshit things. So many things about how to do shit for your cat, you know. A yeah. million and ten videos, tons of cooking shows. It's crazy. It's crazy seeing all the like nine minute long VHS tapes that they bring yeah. up in their live show. It's just like you put you printed, not printed. You put together a whole VHS tape. Yeah, because it was nine that minutes cheap. of footage. Yeah, no, it was. It reminds me a lot of YouTube. It does. It now. really does. It's so cheap and easy to make shit on your phone. So now it is like proto youtube coming back to youtube to yeah. be more youtube than youtube yeah no i love that and there is a charm to this that i think you don't even get with some with a lot of youtube yeah. which is largely i think because it's like, it's like nostalgia yeah it's from my childhood but it's pretty cute yeah it's pretty cute um the fourth thing that we want to highlight is dirty country dirty the country reason looks so good yeah the reason they started doing the live shows was to raise money for this uh Larry Pierce was a country singer who performed overtly sexual country songs. Uh, Howard Stern called him the master of dirty country music. And Larry began performing music in 2001 and continued through 2018. Oh, when he passed away. Yeah, he. Uh, this is this. Unfortunately, he passed away. But I also I think it was. I think I miswrote that note. Yeah. He started in 1991. That makes a lot not more 2001. sense. 2001. Um, but yeah, he has one uh, called She Makes My Peter Stand Up. Which is about his wife. Also, she's got Peter on her mind. Yeah. Unfortunately, it isn't her Peter. Or it sorry, it Peter? isn't his Peter that she has that on her mind. That one was really funny too. Her mind. It's really funny. There are full music videos of this old guy just like singing about his dick. And, and the, the latter one sucked. that you've got Peter on your mind, mm -hmm. that one is very graphic. Yeah. Lots of cum. Lots of like ball jokes. Like yep. it's very graphic. It's. I want to see this one. It's wonderful. No, this. No, <laughs> she makes a Peter stand up. That one's really good. Yeah. No, I want to see this documentary. Oh, yeah. I, I really want to see guy. it. But um, it, it perfectly fits in with their whole sort of body of work mm -hmm. because it's highlighting this like interesting cultural figure who's doing something that's like weird mm -hmm. and really good. Like mm -hmm. Larry. Larry's great, but. But yeah, it's definitely worth checking yeah. out, I think. I can't wait to see it. This is my favorite thing next oh, yeah. that we found. I um, hope this guy is on the show. I hope this guy's on CGP so badly. I I don't even know. I'm I'm ridiculously excited. In fact, I kind of want to call in and ask for pet advice. Oh, yeah. That would be yeah. a really good call. So Late Night Snack with uh, Rachel Dratch found footage of Files Pet Pari. There was this dude, there was this dude who had a pet store and he would go to a public access station. Did he own the pet store or did he just go he to owned okay, the, he pet owned store. the pet store? That makes sense. Uh, he would go to this public access station and, you know, give people animal advice. They would call in with their questions. But what he would do is take like 30 fucking animals. Yeah, it's like a table full of animals. But it's like a small table. It's the yeah. table that came with the studio. It yeah. is a small table. If he were to lay down, he would not... He, his legs would be completely off the table. He puts like 30 fucking animals on this table to just have chaos with each other. There's animals falling off the table. He's like, oh, kitten on the floor, like walks over and picks <laughs> up the fucking cat. There's a monkey for part of it that keeps trying to eat his animals. Oh, yeah. That monkey really wanted to eat so many of the animals. Yeah. He would be like holding a bird and the monkey would just grab its head and he'd be like, please don't eat my bird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ah. It oh, my God. For context, it looks like it's about the size of the table that Chef Sam Taggart yeah. was at yeah. on CGP. Like, it's a very small table. Like 30 <laughs> animals, like a yeah. cage with a lizard in it. And then the cat's like trying to get at the lizard. And he's like, don't eat my $60 lizard, please. <laughs> oh, he's trying to use the lizard cage as a litter box. <laughs> Just picking him up. But this guy has 
the he's so nice. He just seems so unfazed by anything that's happening. Like, I would want this guy in an emergency room. Oh, yeah. This guy is unflappable. Absolutely unflappable. He gets there's an entire montage of him getting Howard Stern calls, like prank calls from from Howard Stern fans. And he loves it. He's just excited about it. Someone calls in and is like, can I stroke your pussy? And he's like, here it is. Picks up a cat. <laughs> People are like, my my dog has Baba Booey disease. And he's like, yep, that's a very serious disease. Uh, you'll need the Baba Booey vaccine for that. <laughs> and I love it because it, it really reminds me of TCGS, where it's mm-hmm. just the guy with glasses intentionally setting up chaos that he will then have to manage for one hour. And that it would be completely impossible for him to successfully manage. Absolutely, yeah. Just there's, a, there's no way. Oh, cat on the floor. Oh, cat on the floor. Oh, ferret on the floor. <laughs> and so the next one is actually, I think, how I originally found out about these guys. Yeah, I had seen these videos before even knowing these guys did anything else. So they, they've pranked local news stations on a number of occasions. They've done it with yo-yo expert Kay Strass, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chef Keith, Chef Keith Gerke which is a last name they also use in another video, and then the Chop and Steel Saga. So I remember when k Strauss was around and was coming out, like podcasts talked about him and all that, and there was the like, is this real? Yeah. Is this not? And so, I never learned the answer. Yeah, this guy goes around as a chef uh, claiming to help people with recipes. Oh, no, I meant k their- Strauss. Oh, I meant the yo-yo, the expert, yo-yo expert portrayed by Mark Proksh, yes. which they were, who they were involved with, but they didn't portray him, but he went on... A local news station as a yo-yo expert has yo-yo merch, like is fully decked out as a yo-yo expert, talks up his abilities, has a whole like routine that's related to air traffic control, and then just starts spinning them around in a circle, like waving his arms around, holding the yo-yos. Not yo-yoing them. No. Just just letting them go yeah. and whipping and them whipping around. Whipping them around in a circle. Whipping them over his he head. He starts to whip them over his head and they get all tangled and he's like, ah. Like, oh, I don't know what to do about all these tangled yo-yos. And that was like, that. I remember I remember loving those videos. And I had no idea that they were behind it. And then there is Chef Keith Gerke, who yeah. you were talking about. <laughs> who uh, claims to help people uh, with recipes for their leftovers, for their Thanksgiving leftovers. Uh, things like uh, ice cream cone mashed potatoes. Um, There's also the leftover smoothie. Yes. Which is very milkshake of death. Very milkshake. It may even be more foul than the milkshake of death. (laughs) Because it was that one was just fried chicken, ham, gravy, mashed potatoes, and cranberries all mashed up together into a nice refreshing drink. Oh. Um, and then of course there's chop and steel. Oh, chop and steel are my favorites. They're two strong men who go on a morning news station, uh, that they were booked by journalists. Yeah, they were like legitimately booked. They didn't like they also did no work. So they're, no, in this case, they did no work. Their whole thing was, these people are not doing real news. Right. They're not doing their due diligence. They're not doing bullshit. So we're going to send them just a press release that says that Chop and Steel are here and they are strong men. They did not make a website no. for Chop and Steel. They, they did nothing. Like anyone with half a second on Google would be able to tell that these people are nothing that they that they don't do this you know but they ended up on this news station doing feats of strength like karate chopping very small sticks and stepping on baskets made of wicker uh just using aluminum bats to hit a tire yeah over and over again just counting it off and like doing um one of them did sit up so the other one like held them up yeah, so it's literal moves from some of the, like, sex yeah. tapes, like, yeah. sex exercise tapes. Um, they uh, Their dialogue is mostly uh, jokes from news outtakes. Yeah, and their news outtakes that you can see in their full live show if you buy that. Um, And they got sued by this station. I can't believe it. Like, I mean, I, know, I do believe it, obviously, but it's ridiculous that they would sue them for the fact that the journalists didn't check anything out it's absurd it took a whole year these guys had to raise all this money because they were being sued they were asking for them to like cover the station's legal fees they had written this whole like three paragraph letter that apology that they wanted them to publicly read like we acknowledge the hard work 
that these journalists are doing. He's like, no, that that's specifically why we did this. My favorite was that they were supposed to acknowledge, you know, journalists wake up early. <laughs> It's like, well, we do too. <laughs> These morning journalists, they're like, bitch, like your next segment was how to tie your scarf fashionably. <laughs> like, this is not real news if you can't Google thing. But they won. Yes. They won it their got case. Dismissed with prejudice. With prejudice, which means that no one can ever uh, sue them for that again. And it also sets a precedent for other people to right. do comedy. And they got all of the footage from the depositions and the legal proceedings, which they are now free to use however they want. Yeah. So that's where one of the clips that I put in, it's actually much funnier in their video. It's like the fourth video on their playlist on their YouTube page called the Chop and Steel Saga. It's from their deposition. And they're like, yeah, we are not, we're obviously not strong men. And the lawyer was like, what is a strong man? And they're like, a strong man <laughs> like uh, we don't look like strong men yeah. like look at us we did nothing to look like strong men except wear a shirt that said chop and he wore a shirt that said steel they also wore bandanas to like get the sweat out of their eyes <laughs> and after that epic saga we're gonna talk about the cat montage oh my god which is really funny oh my god uh, it includes cat massage, caring for your cat with Golden Girls Rue McCallahan, bathing your cat, cats jumping around and playing guitars to Christmas songs, people learning how to train their cats, toilet training the cat, the kitty princess oh, The kitty series. princess was wonderful. Kitties dressed up like princesses looking about as happy as you would expect a cat to look. <laughs> to the point where an anchor covering it just said, that cat didn't want to wear that. <laughs> looked like they couldn't help themselves i loved the rue mcclanahan one because i just never thought i'd see a golden girl in a room full of cats no there's like 40 cats you can't really see the floor in some spots because there's just too many cats like it could have been in a cat hoarding video and i loved their edit on that because it's like oh i hear there's a cat i'm supposed to see and then just cuts to her in a room full of cats just like oh there's so many kitties It's fantastic. And a cat owner sings to her cat that her cat is the best in the United States, which I love because it implies that she understands worldwide. It's definitely at least one cat. that's better (laughs) than her cat, the cat of America. But I think that that that's one of my favorite montages that I saw in terms of highlighting the span of the weirdness and flavor of the weirdness of these cat videos without having to spend time like there there is not a boring second i agree and i'm sure that those vhs are mostly boring seconds oh definitely (laughs) our eighth video is glue man uh this is a short that was directed by joe pickett and uh written with alex pickett and nick pruer um and it stars joe pickett no it stars nick pruer i'm sorry it stars nick pruer (laughs) <laughs> as Nick Douglas, a talking head for hire who will pretend to be an expert on any subject matter your documentary is talking about. Um, he basically, his what he's good at is making the transitions between two pieces of content and at setting up the musical cue that then goes over the montage of historical footage. Yeah. Um, and it feels like really of a piece with those local news pranks that we mentioned earlier because the core conceit and Ken Burns, who is in it. Yeah. They got Ken Burns. Highlights the fact that he can do this and book this guy because no one does their research. So yeah. no one checks anything out. So I can just get him to do it. And he didn't write this book. But on this documentary, he's an expert in, you know, the 60s or various topics. Yeah. Or like the color blue. I loved that one. Like blue is is just the best color. You've got navy. You've got aqua. You've got... It really covers everything. And then he takes the opposite position that blue is blue a makes bad you color. Sad. Because blue didn't really hit its peak of achievement until it mixed with yellow and made green. But of course, that's a whole other documentary. <laughs> they got Morgan Spurlock, too? Yeah, they got Morgan Spurlock of Super Size Me and Ken Burns. And the Ken Burns one is the one that blew me away. Because it's yeah. just like, it feel, when you have an effect named after you, <laughs> it feels weird that you're still like, showing up in fun videos i'm glad he is i'm glad he's yeah. in it but 
Um, our ninth video is the gas and fuel employee training 4A, making it happen. This is a short that was directed by Joe Pickett and Nick Pruer, who also wrote and produced it alongside Jeffrey Haas. And it's basically like a really, it's, we thought this might be a real training yeah, video. Yeah, I was legitimately not sure that it was a parody until I went to IMDb and saw it there. because It is pitch perfect. The way that they filmed it, the style of the dialogue. The products on the shelves are like perfectly 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it it's the story of a guy who's a new trainee at Gas and Fuel, the best international oil corporation, who is there getting training on all the hidden dangers that you can see around the store. And the store is like a like a 7-Eleven AM PM kind of thing. And the dangers are wonderful. Mm-hmm. The one dangers are wonderful. And that was when I started. Some of the dangers are like, like they're cartoonish. They're yeah. paint thinner in the microwave. They're him realizing that he's barefoot in the store. Yeah, like they're so good. And and there's also, they make everything that's subtext in an actual training video text where they use sports metaphors to like communicate that we're a team. I, you're the wide receiver. I'm the quarterback. Well, that manager would be the coach. And he's like, oh, you know, this sports metaphor really makes me feel like I'm part of the team. And as someone who has had to watch those kind of training videos, <laughs> that is like, it's so beautiful to see them parodied that perfectly. Yeah, it really is. So 10 is something that it's from my childhood. I remember, I remember this product. You remember the Rejuvenique face mask? I remember it being parodied as being nightmare fuel. Oh, You well, have yeah. seen this meme. Yeah, you I have seen this have. meme. Anyone who's been on the internet has seen this. It's that creepy fucking plastic mask that you're supposed to put on and it will make you beautiful. It looks like they skinned a mannequin mm -hmm. and like took off its face. <laughs> and put it on as their own. Yeah. Um, and it has an, like a battery pack attached because all on the inside, there's little metal contacts throughout it. And it's designed for you to use it to electrocute your face to look young. Somehow. 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 Um, They have a bunch of these. Yeah. They do a whole video where they each wear them. And then when they get, they, they play a trivia game. They play Fisherman Bible Trivia. Oh, my God. Um, Fisherman Bible Trivia. And whenever they get the Bible Trivia wrong... They have to zap each other in the face. Yeah. Yeah. It, And then uh, for Joe's birthday, Nick has to put two rejuvenate masks on his butt, one on each <laughs> cheek. And then he, Joe gets to electrocute him once for every year he's, however, however, I don't remember how old he is, but for once for every year old he is, alternating cheek to cheek. And it looks, they, it don't, looks even, bad. they don't even make it all the way. They yeah. make it to like 13 and then it's just too much. And it looks, it looks so painful. So oh, yeah. painful. So painful. It's great. But it reminds me of, of the Chris Gethard show <laughs> because it's A, undergoing pain for, for the audience's amusement. And also it just really reminds me of the Tazapper episode from early in the Chris Gethard show's run where all sorts of tasering happens because people made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last on our, our deep dive yes. list, because these guys have so much and... All of their longer episodes are full of so many things. We're like, we're going to be talking for fucking ever. I mean, yeah, like we, we, there's just too much. There's too much. Like we were initially even thinking about, In do fact, we watch 15 old ones? Turn off. Or, or full hours? What? Turn off this podcast right yeah, now. Stop. Go on YouTube, type in found footage festival and just let it run. Oh, yeah, that is like the best way to spend a day. Yeah, it really is. Um, but we're going to talk about Found Footage Festival Volume 8. And that's the one before the one that is touring right now, which is Volume 9. Yeah. And uh, it was filmed at the Bell House in Brooklyn. This one we got the digital download. Yeah, we bought it from the like store. For like 10 bucks, less yeah. than 10 bucks. Yeah. Um, and the membership, like I mentioned, includes all these and is actually a cheaper way to see. Yeah. We didn't realize that until after we bought it, but, but we're probably going to sign up anyway. We're probably so. going to sign up anyways because it's so good. It's such if you're sick at home. Oh yeah, that's the best part. I I was just like in a ton of pain this week, um, and it and it was highly distracting. That's a, it is like the closest thing to daytime TV in the best way. Like the best parts of it with the mm -hmm. weird ads and all the like. How is this a show that I'm watching? Yeah, like how does this exist? Yeah. Um. The the live shows are also very well produced. Yeah. For a live show, I I was very surprised when I saw how well produced it was. I was, was. really impressed. Um, I mean, because I also I saw it before I knew that they had worked on so many 
other things. And so mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense that they, mm-hmm. could, they could pull this off. <laughs> um, so they had, yeah, they the, in this one, they do the 20 years of bloopers from WDAY in Fargo, North Dakota. Some guy apparently yeah. saw one of their shows and came to them and was like, I am an editor for a local news station and it sucks. It's the worst thing ever. But the bloopers are life. I mean, I loved these because so I, I used to be a real like fan of watching local news here in San Francisco. And they they didn't have any, most of the bloopers at this level where like the weatherman walks in front across the screen because they messed up and are projecting him in front of the news desk instead of the weather. <laughs> but they had they had had the moments of like, and now we're going to go to the story about a car robbery in the Richmond district. Actually, we're going to go to that a little bit later on because... <laughs> Oh, no, we're going to it now. Here's the story about the car robbery in the Richmond district. Or just long silences. Like, and now we're going to go to so-and-so with the news. Silence. Silence. And you can tell the anchor doesn't know they're on TV anymore because their posture changes. And you're just like... They're like going through their notes, you know? (laughs) Brushing the edge of their nose because they're like, oh, is it clean? Okay. There's a whole part where people are just picking their noses. That was so good and so gross because they're right that the underside of that desk must be awful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, they have um, 101 Jesuses. Which includes what looks to be a Catholic version of the power team, which was a group of bodybuilders that like com- uh, really communicated the power of Jesus by like karate chopping cinder blocks and like running themselves through walls. <laughs> they had um, a free VHS tape from 1992, 1992 from like a party city yeah, type place. Yeah, it was like place. a party store. Where you get your balloons and then they also give you this like, you know, VHS with a bunch of performers that you can hire for your show. Things like a dirty old man to tease that certain female at your party by harassing them in a creepy rubber mask. And there was also a nerd that you could hire to flirt with the women in your group because it'll be a night she'll never forget. I feel like most of these are like, how can we make our misogyny more funny for the people not experiencing it yeah if any of you were wavering that the patriarchy exists (laughs) um i think this video should erase any doubts that you have (laughs) there was also a bunch of sex instructional videos including how to have safe sex uh, the joe kramer's instructions on self anal massage for men some Kama Sutra tapes and Taoist erotic massage where the host stood in front of a giant stone penis mm, mm-hmm. and Chinese love making secrets where three white guys explained secrets like testicle breathing. Everything that says everything that is an Asian anything. Yeah. There are there are no Asian humans in any VHS tapes, I think. But there is always a white guy with a mustache <laughs> in one of those things that purports to be teaching you Asian secrets. Like, I would I would truly not be surprised if they're like, yeah, they just didn't let Asian people be on film until after DVDs were created. I don't I don't think that any of these were produced at the level where someone could say no. I think this was some dude in his garage hanging like that Sears portrait studio fabric <laughs> around and being like, OK, so we're just going to like take our clothes off, stare into the camera and like breathe in and out. And hold our testicles. And, hold to, to, and like retract and expand our testicles. We're going to say it's Chinese so that people think that it's legit. Does, oh, my yeah, God. No, it's real weird. It's real. Th- this was possibly the weirdest yeah. segment of the videos they played. Oh, yeah. They had uh, some great like celebrities losing their minds, like Mickey Rooney doing an acting class. Yeah, that was part of the Letterman archive that they got. And that was weird. Yeah, was that one's on with YouTube. All the women. That's on YouTube. Yeah, that's in that. We have the link to the YouTube video in the show notes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I liked the baseball, the Pete Rose way. Mm-hmm. Because, and this quote is beautiful, is, you know, it's just like what I told you earlier about sleeping. Some of us sleep standing up. Some of us sleep, horses sleep standing up. <laughs> some of us sleep on our belly. Some on our backs. Some on our sides. Some of our grandmas sleep on a chair. It's like, that's... Thank you. I feel inspired now. I think I'm going to go out and win. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Talking about urine, the documentary, how urine gives you tons of health benefits. Oh, urine, good health. Yeah, urine, good health. 
uh, the Satan Reel, which okay, is this, also on YouTube. I take it back, cause this might be my favorite solely because of the Dark Lord blood. I really want them to have the Dark Lord blood. Someone call in as the Dark Lord blood. <laughs> Someone look this up, and if you do that, I don't know, I'll emote on you so in the Discord. Yeah. The Dark Lord Blood <laughs> is a Satanist who is on a talk show about the dangers of Satan. Yeah. And he's on with what I presume is a preacher. Yeah. And they're like, so are all your friends Satanists? I don't I don't really have friends, but my acquaintances are, yes. Yeah. And like, then, like, a guy is aggressive towards him, and he just growls. Yeah. And the guy, like, claps at he him. He claps in his face. Like, yeah. that's his response to this guy growling as he just claps three times at him as if that the Lord will protect him because of the claps. The, the Satanist is very clearly, like, having fun. Oh, yeah. He's just a masterful troll. Like, yeah. it, that guy now is on social media. Really? The no, Dark Lord no, Blood? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Trolling like brands. Okay, okay. So you just, <laughs> this is your conjecture. You yeah. have not actually no, found I the Dark Lord I haven't Blood. I have found the Dark Lord Blood, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ken M was the Dark Lord Blood. <laughs> Ken M is a legendary internet troll who like, oh, is so overly earnest in his trolling that it's just endearing. <laughs> There's, um... There, there is a whole part where a guy is like they're showing off the Satanist influence in toys so oh, that you yeah. can protect your children. Um, and the guy just looks like he's having a lot of fun playing with these toys, like making Skeletor voices. Yeah, it's wonderful. Definitely check that one out on YouTube. And that'll also be in the show notes. Um, we also saw a video from a reformed Satanist who has oh. become a born again Christian and ate a light bulb to prove the dangerous magic tricks that new age cults will use to lure you in <laughs> they said he looks like if jim henson was a satanist and as soon as i saw him i was like you know what he does he he's does. the most evil looking dude he's got like a green turtleneck and like a crystal necklace and like the henson hair and beard like he looks a lot but like evil henson really and a really intense brow ridge yeah and the type of expression where like his eyes are always shadowed he looks like deeply. vandal savage he does look like That's Vandal what Savage. I picture Vandal Savage, the DC supervillain looking like in oh live my God. action. Yes. Um, and then some CBS affiliates also sent The Late Show their worst local ads, and they play some of those. There's like dog faces warping at the end of them. It's like country music shouting about how you're like in Forbes country if you want a new car. There's a car that's 70 bucks. <laughs> um, and, and they note that these feel like parodies and they do they feel like real they feel really Tim and Eric yeah but they're real they're originals yeah. they weren't they were I mean some of them I think were intentionally funny but they're not funny in the way they were intended to be it almost reminds me of you know how ads now are very absurdist yeah like they yeah. have the uh, some like weird the Skittles ass. one where the yeah. like chicken pox or Skittles that you can eat and stuff mm -hmm. yeah no they do feel like the thing now where ads are just we don't we know that we don't have like a way to get in except for just leaning into being silly. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you're on the budget of a small like car dealership, the way to make your ad memorable is to just have a jingle or a silly character. Yeah, that's very true. Like, we're still talking about these ads. It worked. Very true. Um, and now we have a ton of special mentions yeah. because, again, these people have done so many things. They have appeared in so many things. They have so many hilarious just like little like montages yeah. that we think that you should watch because we love them but we're like we're not gonna go through each one of these videos because honestly we could do an episode that is like we could do hours and hours long about these guys because every single thing is so hilarious but yeah. we're not gonna su subject you to that no it, it also wouldn't be as good as like we said just turning on youtube right like punching in found footage festival and letting it run absolutely like let youtube yeah. curate your list because that's almost thematic. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's actually true. And then the first one, though, is it, Winnebago Man. Winnebago Man, which uh, they appeared in this documentary where they uh, people are trying to find this individual who was selling Winnebagos. And he was just really angry. Yeah. No, this was another of those early, relatively early viral videos that mm -hmm. I remember where it was, just, yeah, a, very, a guy very angrily trying to sell you a Winnebago. Yeah, and just like swearing at people yeah. and, and being super angry. So the people in this documentary found this person. Yeah. And interview him. Uh, 
and hang out with him and it's really warped and weird yeah. and funny and of course they appear in it i mean because, yeah this is right in their wheelhouse yeah so that's that's pretty great definitely watch at least the uh the trailer yeah. for that. And we also have the trailer for volume nine of the found footage festival, just to uh, sort of give you some hints about what might be coming in the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Dundee project, uh, which they are executive producing. And it's a documentary by Mark Borscht, uh, the filmmaker. Borschart. Borschart. Yeah. So not the Russian beet soup. No. I wanted some Russian beet soup. You've disappointed me greatly. Well, instead, it's the filmmaker behind the horror film Coven, and the making of that was profiled in the documentary American Movie. And the description of the tra on the trailer is, in his long-awaited follow-up to 1997's Coven, filmmaker Mark Borchardt steps in behind the camera again with The Dundee Project, a documentary chronicling a small-town UFO festival in Wisconsin, featuring interviews with, with eccentric locals, including UFO Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the film explores the annual ritual, which is equal parts sky watching and heavy drinking, and leaves Borchardt wondering whether any of it really happened at all. And you can buy the whole film. The film's done. Yeah. You can buy it on their website. On their website for eighteen dollars if you want the DVD. And I think you should definitely check it out. You can also get it for digital download yeah, for less. For less, but I I want to I want to see this. This yeah. looks really good. Yeah. And it's also on their streaming service. Very very cute. Uh, Disney World, One Kid's Opinion. That's so adorable. This one they talk about at length with Chris Gethard on the episode of VHS Party Live with Chris Gethard. Um, it's a really good episode, the one with Geth. They do talk to him a lot about the history of TCGS and, you know, how he got into it and stuff. So it was definitely a those parts were a retread for those of us who have spent way too much time listening to Chris <laughs> Gather talk about these things. Um, but the videos are adorable. It's really cute. Uh, would definitely watch. But this kid, it's apparently they played this video like cons or this kid, they, yeah. they played this kid right. and his episodes constantly yeah. on the public access. So he was known because they just kept playing it. And it's just this little kid like talking about Disney World well, and what he thinks. One of the reasons I really like that one is because it's a public access show that you can watch without you don't you're not making fun of it. No. You know, because it's like a, it's a kid and so it's super adorable and like he's really he's actually like for a kid very like oh, yeah. good at being on camera yeah, and doing this kid. for a small kid he like he's really together on but it. they know this kid but they, they also know him kid. yeah they 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 searched out this kid they found this kid so that when gethard's all like i feel bad making fun of a child uh they're like nah we know this child <laughs> he's a man now <laughs> we can make fun of him as much as we want and i wonder if he became a man by watching how to be a real man mm. which they also have a clip of which is where an average teen discovers that christ is way better than counting crows or green day or pearl jam and we know this because he's walking around and then a book falls from the sky that just says love god with all your heart and immediately like a switch flipped he starts like throwing cds at the wall Taking biting bites CDs. Out of them. he like it looks like punt like rips into his TV and rips the wiring out and is like you are disconnected. <laughs> and then his friend asks if he want if he has a light to like light up a cigarette. And he just punches his friend in the face out of nowhere. His friend should have turned the other cheek. I mean, I think his friend turned turned a cheek and his fist just went right through it. <laughs> um, I just I love that one. It's so like the the book that he sees looks like it's a day planner yeah that they like slipped a piece of paper into yeah oh yeah um we put a, a link in the discord called special delivery oh yeah which is just about dogs giving birth and so <laughs> it's just a montage of all the times they say things about bitches <laughs> there's also computers which i really like because it has don't copy that floppy the song about how video game piracy via floppy disk is terrible as delivered by a dancing computer man and I love it. And they actually sell merch about yeah. Don't Copy That Floppy. And I had seen Don't Copy That Floppy on its own. So the idea that I can go get merch about Don't Copy That Floppy is so cool <laughs> to me. So I wanted to highlight that. And then also Wild Chicago, which is a, a public access host dressed up as a safari-like person, person on safari, yeah. running around Chicago. It goes to a burlesque theater and a... Like diner that's train themed. Yeah. Just to show off the wild side of the windy city. 
And then there's also, we're going to end our special mentions with another, um, another segment from Rachel Dratch's late night snack, which is how to be a public access star. And it feels good to mention this because it's so relevant to the topic that we're going to do on CGP or that they're going to do on CGP. And it and, has just gems yeah. of public access hosts. It has one of the singing lady that you used in the inner screech. They say the screeching, s- right? She's screeching. Yeah. The, this woman is uh, her. Is she singing or is she a just very, talking? She's talking. Oh, okay. This is a very old woman and a, a very old man. Um, yeah. Screeching about Jesus. There's also a guy who, who works at a high school and interviews the students, but they can't hear him talking because he talks a lot. He, he, it's not just at a high school. It's all over the place. Uh, He's like interviewing yeah. them. But the thing that he says is, yeah. and it's just a, a cut of them being like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and and they give other tips about how to, how to make it on public access. So if any of you out there are aspiring Chris Gethards, you should definitely check it out. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then also in the in the spirit of of the episode, we we're going to include links to a few Bay Area public access gems in our show notes, including to Spilly Chili's Bowl of Rocks, <laughs> which is a public access show that a friend of ours actually worked on, mm-hmm. um, where the bands come on and play, and there's like a cool green screen, and Spilly is just like a really funny, a really funny performer. Like I really yeah. like Spilly. Yeah, um, they do a lot of screaming. And yeah, the, the God Stomper one is the link we're going to include. And the yeah. opening of that, like, Spilly nails it. I think yeah. it's really funny. So definitely like check it out. I think I think it's really cool. And it's a nice little gem that so we can contribute in our own way to documenting the history of public access. <laughs> um, And they have a bunch of upcoming shows. Yeah, because volume nine is on tour right now. And yeah. So- uh, they will be at the North Door in Austin on September 13th. The Texas Theater in Dallas on September 14th. They'll be at the Capri Theater in Montgomery, Alabama uh, on September 26th. And then at the Colonial Theater in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania on October 11th. And the Bell House in Brooklyn, New York on October 12th. I'm so excited. I'm going to buy that as soon as it comes out. Yeah. I'm just, I can't wait. Like I hope they come to Sketchfest this yeah. year. I'd love to see them again. So. I hope they come around. I hope their tour reaches the West Coast and we can see them someday. Yeah. So what do you think this episode is is going to have? We we did talk about it, our our wishes. Right. Yeah. A little bit as we went through this episode including Pet Puri. We hope that that that, that I think person they'll get Mark. There. I think they'll get Mark Marone to come on the Pet Puri guy just because I mean with their uh with their video for Late Night Snack, they went to his pet store and talked mm-hmm. about it. And so that makes me think well, that and the fact that he eventually had like more success, like he went on and did it the same. Martha kind Stewart. Of, yeah, he was on Martha Stewart doing the same kind of thing. So I think they can probably talk to him, find him, get him to come on the show and talk about being on public access. Um, so I think he'll be on. I would not be surprised if the kids on also the Disney one kid's opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if one kid's opinion about Disney is on, and just. Those yeah, those are the main two I think are most likely to come by, and I'll be excited for anyone else that they get, so we, that they and Geth can. Cause I hope I hope Geth's on because as a public access success story, <laughs> I would love if he could be part of it this time in a way he's not always. Someone can call back in and ask Chris uh, if he can ask what's on the human fish's mind. I, I mean, yeah, they could. That was fucking. It was hilarious. really funny then, but I hope they don't do it too much more because like. Well, it trolling, came out of nowhere. Trolling there. Geth about TCGS is funny in a way that trolling anyone else about it is not. That's true. No, that's that's very true. Uh, because it's his thing, it's and Geth. so he's always going to be linked to it. And it's also Gethard. Yeah, trolling like, Gethard is what makes our fan base a family. <laughs> 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 I mean, we are the group that took away his mod privileges in his own fan group. <laughs> Because he was trolling us too hard. <laughs> um, you didn't ask me what I think this episode is going to well, be. Well, I mean, I was going to. Okay. Are, are you going to ask? What do you think will be on this episode? Penises. You know what? You actually have a pretty good chance because there was a lot of dicks in some of those those uh, VHS tapes. So there you have a good dicks. shot. You have there a good was shot a whole one that's just uh, out. They had to put together a montage of the non-sex parts of VHS porn. Yes. I think it's going to be a montage of 
just the disembodied penises. There was also a video. Or, that, you know, close up on penises. Right. There was also a video that said which penis size and which vagina sizes are most compatible. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so there was also that. So you've got a really good chance of your prediction coming true this time, I think. Penises. I think it's going to oh, yeah. be all penises. Yeah, pubic access. <laughs> But yeah, thank you all so much for listening. We are so, so excited for the Found Footage Festival yes. on uh, September 4th. 4th, this Wednesday. This Wednesday night. Holy crap, friends. We're super excited. Someone call in asking for pet advice. Someone call in just growling like Lord yeah, Blood. Yeah, we gotta have growling, we gotta have pet advice. Lord Blood, if you are listening, oh, I, I want to talk to you, Lord Blood. Will you be my acquaintance? Will you be my acquaintance? I know that you're a Satanist. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, watch it. You can uh, find them at foundfootagefestival.com. Is that true? I just made that up, that that's where you can it's find them online. foundfootagefest.com. Foundfootagefest.com. You can find them on YouTube by searching Found Footage Festival or VHS Party Live. And, uh, yeah, check them out. We'll see y'all Wednesday. See you Wednesday in the chat or the Discord. The Discord. Planet Scum. See you on Planet Scum. See you on Planet Scum. It's got an interesting little feature here. I'm going to turn it on. It can actually transform your voice from uh, your regular voice to that of an occultic hero. Is that correct? So let's get a Skeletor type of voice. Skeletor, the master of the universe.